car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. <laughs> Good morning guys, so today a pretty basic job, I'm installing a Pioneer Singleton Meckler stereo into this 2004 Mazda Atenza, it's a Japanese import and we have got the fitting kit on the way, hopefully that just arrives in the next hour or so. So we're doing the Pioneer MBH S305 BT which is Meckless but it's got Bluetooth and it's got a built in serial control decoder as well so that's going to help us get our steering wheel controls in the Mazda going. So this is the current dash, which is why we need a fitting kit. So you got the heater down the bottom and the stereo all in one sort of unit. So the kit that we've got coming in completely replaces this whole silver thing. It allows you to put a single DIN slot in here and then all of the original heater functions are kept and they slot through the kit. So at the moment the way it works you can see up here it's got this screen and it displays the audio information up the top there with the clock and the uh, heater mode and stuff like that and I've already checked all of this and it all works fine so I know that uh, when I'm finished with the job if something isn't working properly that I need to check what I'm doing because everything is working good at the moment. This Mazda also has one of these Japanese upgrade kits in it which is designed to do navigation but obviously in New Zealand they're of no use whatsoever because it thinks we're in Japan somewhere which runs off this remote here which uh, is supposed to work wirelessly like with infrared you can see the little infrared receiver there but for some reason it's not but it does still work when it's plugged in down here so I can go like TV I can switch and you can see it switches the audio over to TV mode and I think if I go uh, I'm pretty sure if I go down to like channels 2 and 3 Fire in an industrial There is some audio there, although it's very very Yeah That's probably just, you know, static coming through because New Zealand did used to be on an analog VHF or UHF TV service Ago we switched over to digital Freeview which is um, you know obviously so it no longer comes across the airwaves it all comes through cable but uh, if for some reason there is still some like static and stuff going on I did used to have a car that had a Japanese TV tuner in it and I do remember being able to get the audio for TV3 only for a while so what I'm doing with this obviously since it is of absolutely no use to the customers here in New Zealand I'm going to, this by the way can like tilt and stuff, and then there's a close button there. I'm going to close it like that and disconnect it from power so that it just stays like that because they don't need it, you know, using up battery power or flipping open and close when you turn the car on or anything like that. So I'll just disconnect that and also that way it means that when they cycle through their modes, although I suppose we're changing the stereo so it won't make a difference, but um, you'll notice the steering controls here, we've got volume. Uh, preset up and down, mute and mode, and they all work. And if I skip through the mode, it actually does go through the TV source there, which is interesting. I've checked that we get full AM reception, which we do. That's how we check that uh, the aerials in the cars here in New Zealand are working, you know, fully functionally, that we go to AM. In fact, let's try 612, because I think 612 is about the weakest station there is here in New Zealand. Yeah, 612. Yeah, quite staticky, but it is there. Then a stronger one would be 1593. And that's how we check the, um, that the aerial is working all good. So, and the other things I check is with the headlight switch over here. I check that all this stuff is dimming. All of this out on the hazard switch as well. That has to work, which it does. And I've checked the functionality of all of these dials and buttons as well so all of that is all good I can start taking this apart and though I won't be able to mount it in yet I can start prepping that new stereo for installation I can install the microphone I can wire up the harness to a hookup lead which will connect onto the factory plug for here and I can also get the lead ready for the steering wheel controls to go into the Pioneer so yeah I'll start by doing all that stuff and then uh, 
hopefully by the time I've done all that the fitting kit will have arrived and we'll be able to mount it in there and I'll show you how it goes together as well. Hopefully that stays there. I'm just going to show you how to get the uh, dash apart to get the stereo out. Just kind of got this, the camera propped in between the headrest of the driver's seat at the moment. Hopefully it stays there. Don't want it falling down. I just haven't got a, I would put it down here on the seat and to show you guys but I haven't got a very big tripod for it yet so I feel like the view would be down here and it'd be way too close. So, to get this apart, uh, you kind of have to start from, oh, uh, you guys can't see actually. So we have to start from down here, we have to get the cup holder out, and then the surround around the gear shifter out, and then this all comes out as one unit. Oh, and also, this has to come out as well, which will mean we need the key on. Hello. Because there are two screws under here and here. Let's turn the audio off for a minute. By the way, um, you know how I said that it displays audio information up here? Obviously I presume you guys are assuming this, but no audio information is going to display up there after I put a new stereo in. But it won't affect the operation of the screen at all. This section here will just simply be blank. So, has this coffee cup got anything in it? No. Good. But if you can get this under here, just be careful of right here because it's very thin. It'll work it. There we go. Sorry, it's quite hard to film and look at what I'm doing at the same time. Oh yeah, there we go. Sometimes it quite often likes to take this bit up with it, but we'll fix that in a minute. Just careful of the thin section around the side of the handbrake here. Wonder if I can temporarily see you guys up over here. Out there, okay. So pull up on the pull up on the black piece and push down on the silver or it's the other way around this out of here to begin with just oh no there it is sorry it is just uh, simply clipped through so the black piece does come up on its own first if you can get it there we go so now the cup holder comes out on its own and now this piece around the gear stick has come out and I'm going to need to move the gear shifter down. So, oh wait, does... Now this one I do have to take the gear shifter off. Okay, so I turn the ignition on. Put my hand on the brake and move the gear shifter to the middle. Get my little stubby Phillips. There are two screws on the front of the gear shifter. Little countersunk ones. That off and that off. There we go. Two little screws. Put them somewhere safe. In my case, it's probably just on the floor since that's very empty at the moment. And then... Okay, sorry about that guys, I was just having a momentary lapse in memory on how these come apart and work. Um, I don't know why, but I thought I had remembered taking these apart before, but obviously not. So what you do is you move the gear shifter all the way to its lowest position, and then you can lift the gear shifter up just enough so that the screw, so you can put one of the screws back in the gear shifter. If you put it in the bottom hole, but lift it up so that it then lines up with the original top thread, if that makes any sense. So you only have to lift it up by a tiny amount just to uh, get that to line up. And then all that's going to do is stop the gear shifter knob from coming off and going everywhere like that. And then we can sort of just lift it up and unplug things from around it, like the light at the front end. It's going to be hard for you guys to see, but there's a cigarette lighter attachment just just here that needs to unplug. Push in and then release and then the light one is one of these non-twisty ones. You have to kind of like bend it out. It's really stupid. Come on. There we go. It's like clipped in. And then I wonder if I can get the one from the back here as well. That and then twist this one underneath. You guys can't see what I'm doing but you kind of have to feel around for it. Twist. Yes. Maybe no, maybe I'll just leave that one, but I can pull this back a bit more. Unfortunately, that's about as far back as you can get it to go. And the handbrake does have to be up. Because now, we can get to a couple of screws in there. You might, just might be able to see them. There's one just in there and in there. And I'll see if I can show you. So the two screws, it's not those bottom ones. It's the ones above them. If you can see there, there it is. That screw, that Phillips one at the top. There's another one 
over on that side that you have to get. I'll just get those out. One there, and another one. Now up the top, we use a little flathead screwdriver just to carefully pry that up. Oop, close. There we go, there's one, two. And they are a 10 mil head, okay. 10 mil socket screwdriver. Now what comes out first, this or the stereo? Let me just quickly refresh my memory, get a pry bar in here. Looks like the stereo does come out first, okay. So yeah, get your pry bar, get in between the side of the stereo and the stereo, and just sort of slowly work it out. I think it kind of helps if you sort of put your hand underneath it and kind of like pull and lift at the same time. You just got to work it out, because it is all just clipped in. There we go, she's coming. Pretty sure there's no security screw. My bad guys, there is a security screw in the glove box that you have to get out. Sorry, my head's all over the place today, it's Friday. I'm obviously just fe feeling a bit uh, forgetful. Okay, so for me to get that out, I'm gonna have to drop down this uh, DVD unit first somehow, because that's in the way. Okay, there's two 10 mils there I can get at. Oh, they're tight, they are very tight. Did it? Since you've got the key on and all, I might just put the battery on charge, eh? Yep. Oh, there we go. Oh. Far out, they had them done up tight. I'll probably take this DVD ROM unit out of the glove box anyway, because this is for the navigation thing. And then it just looks like it comes down. Look at that, it just comes out. What's that? That'll be why the battery's going flat. There we go, there's the DVD ROM in it. But before I unplug that, I'm going to close that screen. Unplug the aerials. Now I can get to that 10 mil security nut that I totally forgot about. Which is just, from the glove box, you just go into the right. And then it's right there. You should be able to see it with a torch. Undo it, and then, there it is. Now, that'll probably make my life a bit easier for getting the stereo out. So yeah, she's totally loose now. So now, because I've still got this thing here, I don't want to damage that, I need to get a towel and lay that down on top of there. Because this is going to have to come out and kind of sit up on here. Highly sophisticated anti-scratch, anti-damage material known as old bath towel. Wrap that around there. Now this can just sort of come forward and come on up and out like that. Now start unplugging some stuff. So the first thing is, so there we go, down the back here you can see we've got this plug here. This is like the one for the, uh, where does it go? I'm pretty sure this is the one for the heater. That plug there, all those wires, the heater and the hazard light button. So if I disconnect that, let's first of all turn ignition off. It's gonna beep at me. Unplug this one. Freaking hard to do with just a fingernail. Sometimes it's easier to use a screwdriver. Sometimes it's easier to not have to be holding a big hunky camera at the same time. But you know, eh, there we go. There, oh, that's the, for the screen. That's what that's for. That just turned off. Cool. And then we've got the aerial. That one there is going to be the uh, connection to the TV tuner. So we won't have to worry about putting that one back in anywhere. Because that's what that is. So if we disconnect that. And then. This big massive one is our main harness with all our powers, speaker wires, and stereo control wires. I wonder if I can do this one one-handed. Come on. No. Undo this big 
fuck. Come on. Ah, come on. Ow. There we go. And then there's another couple plugs down the bottom for the heater. And there we go. That's the unit completely out. So there we go. All I really need to worry about is this thing. And this does get plugged back in because it does display heater and clock information on it. So I'll plug that back in once I'm mounting the new stereo. Aerial, this is the lead for the TV tuner, I'm pretty sure, the auxiliary input or something, so don't need to worry about that. I might trace it back and see if I can remove the whole TV tuner, which is this whole deal here that I just pulled out. Oh my god, that still opens, even though there's nothing connected. Interesting. I'm going to see if I can take that out, which is just two Phillips heads. Oh, I see, it doesn't want to because the cable is still attached. I have to pop that out. Free up its cable and then just pull out. Somehow. Don't know why it doesn't want to come. I got the bolts. Oh, it wants to be up when I do it. Okay. So, oh yeah, there's plugs at the back I can disconnect from. So I close this. Like that, there we go, and there. All these plugs at the back can be disconnected since we don't want it to go up and down anymore. That one, that one, and that one's gonna need my little flathead screwdriver. There we go. Now I can just shove those wires back in there where they're out of the way and put this whole thing back in, hopefully. If I can do that. That. Oh yeah, that was a lot easier getting in than taking it out. So it is. Oh wait, no, the issue with this is I can no longer put the bolts from the top in. Uh, I guess I have to plug it back in. My bad guys. Yeah, nah, I'd rather it, it be secured properly. Oh well, take it back out. <laughs> okay, I guess I have to plug it all back in and it'll just have to be connected and being useless. Yep, see, because yeah, these screws that were up in the top here need to be in okay because uh, otherwise it's not going to open up again if I disconnect it from power and well we'll just leave it plans change there we go all is as it was <laughs> pop those back in there close that Okay guys, so some, uh, some time has passed and the fitting kit still isn't here. But we have been billed for an overnight courier. We are told that it is definitely coming here, so we're hoping that it is. In the meantime, I am going to solder the stereo stereo loom. Probably would just be easier if I did this. I'm going to solder the Pioneer stereo loom to this hookup lead for Mazda. So I'll set up a real quick time lapse and do that and then after I have done that I will also I think install the microphone and at that point the next step after I've done that is to start removing pieces from this like the uh, heater controls from the back of it the vents and the hazard lights oh no not the hazard lights sorry but the the heater controls and the vents had to come off this and all the clips but I don't really want to start disassembling that until I do have the kit on hand uh, so that I know that this is all definitely happening because if for whatever reason the kit somehow doesn't manage to make its way to us That's gonna have to go back in and we're gonna have to postpone the customer unfortunately This is why I don't like booking jobs for the next day, but it's okay because it wasn't my fault okay, Yep the has got two items on board. Yep and So what he was just Running late, or is he doing a later delivery? Or? Probably was meant to come here but forgot. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Well, there you go. Get cracking on it, yep. Yeah. Well, there we go. Turns out the kit is in Christchurch. It is in the van and on its way to us. So I can solder this now with confidence.
Okay, there we go, guys. Harness made up. So all the connections are soldered, plugged in. I have mounted up the microphone, run it along and inside everything on there above the glove box, and then it just pops out about here. And I've also started doing these steering wheel controls as well. And I'll just, I'll just stop the time lapse real quick to show you kind of how I've done that. Um, <clears throat> as far as figuring out what wires they are, there are a million different ways you can figure this out, either from like, you know, doing online research or actually manually testing them all. I happen to have a link here from Sony, Sony's website, which, and this works with Pioneers as well obviously, has a bunch of different Japanese car stereo plugs in it and they tell me what pins are what. So I go here to the Mazda 24 pin and it tells me that those two pins, there it is, that the two pins there where it says G and 1 are my connections for the reference ground and the signal wire for my steering wheel controls. So that, once I've worked out you know, where that is on the plug, I found that it's these two wires here, which is the, there's the focus, there it is, it's like the brown white or is it green white, sorry I don't know, I'm colorblind, um, and red black there. So the one on the, that was on the outside, that was my ground. That's the ground wire there, and then that one there's the signal. So what I did was I just soldered a piece of speaker wire on there to extend it out so that I could then solder on this. This is just a three and a half mil aux cord connection with the three wires in here. Since this Mazda is only using two pins, I only need the two wires. And I worked out that in this cord, the bottom connection there, if I can get this to focus, the one furthest to the right is yellow, and the one furthest to the left is red. So that's the ground, the one furthest to the right. So that's my yellow wire there, going to my black, which goes to the outside wire here. And then the most inner left pin there, which is technically the right channel on an aux cord, I use that for my number one. It doesn't really matter what way round you use, you know, pins one and two. Uh, they can be switched up, it doesn't really make a difference, but as long as you don't get them mixed up with pin 3, which is the reference ground. And so then, yeah, that's what the other one is soldered to. And just before I, you know, tape all this up and loom it up into the loom, I'm going to temporarily plug in the stereo and test it and make sure it all works. Okay, so here's my Pioneer stereo. Start by plugging in the main harness. And then the steering wheel control wires just plug into, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but over here on the side, so there's the microphone port just there, and then below that is the WR port, which is wired remote. Plug that in there. Now it's wanting me to set the time, I'm just gonna set it to 12, all that quick, yes. Just check none of the connections are touching since I haven't taped them up yet. Like that. Now we wanna go menu, system, S remote, presets, and then go across to Mazda, press volume up for one second, so I'll do that on the steering wheel, press volume down, completed. Now it says it's working, so now if we just push source, just set that down there for a minute. Make sure if we can set it over here, it'd be better. There we go, now let's try adjusting some stuff. So the volume is working, mute, mute works, mode, which will be hopefully be the source button, aux, bluetooth, radio, that seems to work. Now seeking up and down, let's see if these work, because in Mazdas sometimes these don't work because the resistances of them are so similar that sometimes stereos can't tell the difference. Let's try seeking up first. So pushing it once goes through the presets and holding it seeks up and it's not going to find anything because I haven't got the aerial plugged in but um the down button yep that seems to work going down and we hold it and it seeks down sweet so all of them are working then they're all working as they should separately I was hoping that would be the case maybe it's because it's a newer Pioneer but in the past with these Pioneers and other stereos that have a learning system built into them um, I have found that just only in Mazdas, in the past, 
I can't remember its volume up and down or seeking up and down, but they have been very similar resistances, meaning that the stereos or the decoders couldn't tell the difference between them. And some, sometimes what that means you end up with is over here you would end up with like all of this working, volume up and down, mode, mute, and then seek up would be seek up, and then seek down would also be seek up, if you know what I mean. But that is all good because it looks like if that was an issue, Pioneer have now fixed it in their new model of new lineup of stereos. So that's great because this is from the new Pioneer uh, S series. So the predecessor of this was the MVH X295. This is the MVH S305. And these new S series ones all have dual Bluetooth in them as well, which is awesome. I'll show you some more features of the stereo once I've got the install finished, but that's, um, yeah, that's good. That's all working, so I can unplug that now, tape it all up, and then, since now we know the fitting kit is in Christchurch and on its way to us, I'll start dismantling that fascia over there and showing you how I transfer the parts from that face to the new kit. Let's just unplug these. Everything's hard with one hand. This shouldn't be too much of a problem for too long. I, I have got some tripods for this camera on the way, but at the moment I'm just using this little miniature adjustable tripod. The reason, as I explained in the other video, that I don't use this one is because if you watch, see how that just came off so easy? And that's with a little lightweight GoPro. This uh, upper ball and socket joint here is all worn out and it just falls off way too easy. Like the GoPro is not a problem because it's quite lightweight, but um, putting this big 450 gram camera on it, it would just fall right off way too easily. But I have got another one of these ones and a heavier duty one of these ones on the way. So soon I should have some better setup shots with this camera. So yeah, let me, let me take this thing up. With figuring out steering wheel control wires in your car, um, rather than me trying to find a link to this thing, because I don't know where it is anymore on the Sony's website, it's actually just loaded into my phone. Um, best place for you guys to find out what wires in your car are steering wheel control wires, if it's not this Mazda where I've just shown you what they are, then um, if you go to Google and Google access interfaces, and that's not spelt access the normal way, it's spelt A-X-X-E-S-S -S -S space interfaces. If you google that, they're a really good company that make um, quite a famous steering wheel control interface known as the ASWC1 and they have a lot of instructions for different cars on there that tell you what wires are what and how they work, even for CAN bus cars. And all of their instructions are designed to help you wire in their uh, steering wheel control interface kit, the ASWC1, into the car, but you don't have to do it for that. Like, I just use it um, I just used their website before I got this, you know, little PDF. I used that to figure out what wires were what in cars just for wiring up these Pioneers and any Sony stereos that have a built-in decoder. So I'd recommend checking them out if you don't have a Mazda and you don't know what uh, wires are your steering wheel control wires. The other way you can do it if you know what you're doing, if you're a bit of an experienced installer, obviously, is you can take to the wires with a multimeter and just put it on impedance mode and try and measure an impedance between all the different wires and if you find one where it changes when you push it um, when you push the steering control buttons that's how you know you found it okay so that's look, uh, taped up now let's loom that with the microphone as well probably almost yeah I can look at that I can even take the microphone all the way behind here and limit up with this okay I'm still learning the uh, focusing system of this camera as you can tell sometimes I guess that's the thing with cameras that have a good autofocus the only thing about them is that though they have a good autofocus they don't know what you want them to focus on so sometimes they'll just randomly switch between the background and the foreground I have my one set to a uh, facial and tracking so that if my face is ever in shot it's supposed to you know focus on that first and then anything else it just kind of decides for itself what it wants to focus on. Still learning, always learning. <sighs> New technology. Ooh, that's that, that's that, that's that. Okay, cool. The wiring side of the car is all done. Now I can take you guys outside and show you how to start dismantling <sighs> that factory stereo out there. There we go. 
Got myself a piece of spongy foam here. These are just leftover parts from Focal speaker boxes and they actually make really nice uh, work pads. So, get this factory stereo. Okay, set it on its face, which is why we have the work pad. So everything that has to come off this, that goes onto the new one, is obviously the heater control module, the vents, and all of these little white clips. Nothing else has to come off, but I think certain things do have to be removed in order to get them out, like these brackets here have to come off to get the heater out, though you don't end up using them on the new kit. So I'll start by trying to undo all the screws that need to come out. Oh man, it would rather stay to my screwdriver than the magnetic plate, look at that. There you go, there's a strong magnet. And there's another one down inside here. Now this vent just lifts off, we're going to need that for later. And now I've got to get the heater module out, which I have to start by getting these little braces off, but I will undo these screws first, so there's this Phillips one here. That'll be the fitting kit turning up. There he goes. Mr. Late Courier giving us all a scare, wondering if we're going to be able to do the job today. Like, because normally he drops things off at like sort of 9 in the morning, you know, like 8 30, 9 o'clock. It's now past 11 o'clock, so that's why we've all been, you know, freaking out, wondering if we're going to be able to do this job or not. Thank you. Here she is. Let's keep going, so uh, for these ones you need a smaller Phillips drive, you need like a, I think this is a Phillips 2, sorry this is a Phillips 1, Phillips 2's are the standard ones, most screws are Phillips 2's but this one is a Phillips 1, actually no sorry I tell a lie, even though they look smaller they are still a Phillips 2, don't worry about what I just said. these just come off. These don't need, you don't need these for the install into the new stereo but it's good to keep all the parts that come off it. Now this heater control module just sort of lifts up and out carefully like that. All oh, right, we need that piece. Right, okay. So that comes off like that and there's those little connections there which means we do have to get this whole stereo off here. So we undo these big ones. Oops, sorry, look at the right thing. Anything else? And these two big ones here. What else needs to come off? We need to take this we need to take this side panel off the uh, side of the stereo so we can get this loom out of the way. And that just unplugs. Carefully. Oh wait, there is a little clip here. You do have to squeeze this to get it out. Squeeze and pull. There we go. Anything else need to come off before this will come off this face? No, and then carefully lift up and there is the body of the stereo off. Set that down over there. Okay, new developments in the uh, factory to aftermarket kit situation. Let me show you what I'm used to working with because I've done quite a few of these uh, ones, the old ones with the silver face and the new ones with the black face the Mazda 6s, or if it's a Japanese one, it's called an Atenza. So here, so here is the kit that norm, what I normally install. 2003 to 2005, and the kit normally looks like that, if you can see, it's got 
the original heater buttons down the bottom and a hazard light button up the top and a single din hole. And those heater buttons that you can see there, those are the factory heater buttons transferred from the old stereo onto the new one. And the hazard light button. And also here is the one for the New Zealand new version, which is the black face. Both Metra, that code. So, this code here is the 997523S for silver. And that is what we got. The 997523S. And even though that's, that there is just a sticker, it even says here 997523S. But what I think has happened is at some point, Metra's turbo kits have gone to series two. Uh, Dean, you may be able to confirm this for me because you're a bit more up with it if you're watching. Um, I haven't done one of these masters in a while, but obviously their kits have changed because now, what? It's different, this is a totally different, yeah, don't worry it is silver, even though this picture is black. This is a totally different kit to what I'm used to. This is for a double din stereo, and now the hazard light and demister button are over there, and the AC and internal air, uh, air recycling button are over here. So that's totally different to what I'm used to. Which means, potentially, which means I don't have to remove the hazard light button or the heater control buttons and transfer them over. So, let's look at what I do have to move over, because now, one thing I think I will definitely have to take off the kit. Yep, okay, I'll do that now. One thing I do still definitely have to take off this fascia is all these white clips, because they go on the new kit and help hold it in. So I'll just do that real quick right now. Best way to do these is get a flat blade screwdriver under here. Use your finger to hold one side out and then get it under the other side and lift up. There's one. Okay, pretty sure that's everything I need off there. I'm gonna set this down over here. Now let's get this new kit out and have a look at it. Some instructions. I got everything out of their bags to have a look at what it comes with. So it comes with a pocket, so that's good. Man, it comes with a lot more than I thought it would. I'm, like these didn't used to come like this. It comes with an older Mazda hookup lead for some, oh actually, what does that do? What does that do? Oh, I know what that does. That feeds the heater information to the car. This is the OEM harness hookup, which goes off to wires and there's a couple of small plugs on here. I assume that those are for different steering wheel control inputs or something, I don't know. Because I've already made up my harness and that's all good and working. Like it plugs into an access. Yeah, well, I don't think it'll plug. No, I bet it'll be a Metra kit of its own. I don't think this would plug into an access thing because this isn't an access kit. It's Metra. Mm, yeah. so, and that must. I don't know what that does. Hope I don't have to use this because I've already made up my loom. It's uh. And and it comes with these little white clips that I just took off. Mm. And screws. And what else? And more screws. And that. Let's have a look under here. Oh, I think I do have to use that harness because it looks like that harness is what powers oh, this uh, whole heater control unit. Jeez, there's a micro, U a mini USB, not mini, wow. micro USB port there. There's a wee bit of electronics on that thing. Just oh, grab, grab point. Yeah. Grant just pointed out that uh, for some reason this one is missing its rubber boot. Oh wait, there it is. It had just fallen. Oh wait, no, that's stuck on there for a reason, don't worry. Man. Oh, let's stick these on here anyway. Oh. Yeah, definitely. I don't know, should be around here. Well, what's quite cool is this whole uh, thing here. You can see those little white ports. They line up with these little white ports. So all I have to do is drop this on here. But what do I do about those things? What are they? Where do they go to? This, oh, I don't know, I need two hands. 
Assumingly, these go under here. Oh yeah, so that all lines up with that. I don't know what the point of these LEDs is. Looks like another piece has to come off here first. Off the, uh, does that have to come? Oh yeah, that piece there has to come out, okay. Man, this kit is a lot more involved than what I remember. I suppose it's good, but it just means that I'm just learning this for the first time now. This comes up and out of there. Oh yeah, cool, that comes out of there. Sweet, now I think I'm done with that. And then this. Goes down. Somehow. Like that. Okay. Just like that. These back in. Cool. And now the heater control probably goes in. I still don't know what to do with these uh, little LED things. That looks decent. I presume those LED things are to do with a different kit, like, because this has got an electronic heater control, maybe they're designed for the uh, manual heater controls version. Now, these have to go on, which go this way. Okay, that's all of that. Still don't know what happens with these things, unless they screw into there or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so I think I've figured out most of this kit that I am just learning about today. It's taken me, you know, just a little bit of reading here and there. Um, these little LED things are if you have a manual climate control as opposed to an electronic one like this. Normally these would, I think, screw down to like those points there and there with the factory screws if you had them, but I'm not using them since they have an electronic climate control. Um, and also over here, what I quite like since we've got an electronic climate control, this is the harness that came off the side of that stereo. This will just plug straight into there, into the heater, so that's awesome. That just works, you know, plug to plug. This is if you have a manual climate control. This would plug into that point there and then plug into the connection at the, uh, at the car end for if you've got a manual climate control, but we don't, so we don't need that. And then this is the main harness, which has obviously the Mazda end, all the speaker wires and power wires and everything like that. That end there plugs into this side over here for the, for the demister, rear demister and the hazard light button. And then this end here is, I still haven't worked out what that has to plug into, whether it's a ace wick or something else, but I won't be using this. To be honest, I'll probably end up chopping it off because only wire I need out of this whole thing is this one here, because that goes to the same steering wheel control wire that I've already soldered onto in the car. So I'll probably disconnect them and use this. And the reason I do have to use this harness is because it has all the powers jumping off it to give this kit power. So I will have to re-solder everything to this uh, harness instead. And I need to do something about tucking these a bit better. Oh, and also at some point before I forget, I need to take this little panel out of here and put that down in there. <sighs> Great, isn't it, when you go to make a how-to video and then you're kind of teaching yourself how to do it on the day because you haven't had to deal with this new kit before that took you by surprise. But it's good though because these Metro kits are very affordable and now they have them in double DIN because before they were only single DIN. If you wanted a double DIN, you had to get an expensive Ed's one which was like double the price, so that's good for customers.
go. I got the uh, stereo wired to the new harness and everything in there and the stereo mounted up. Um, I, the way it mounted is it kind of like sits on this shelf which is down here, the brackets do, and then these arms come out and meet this angled piece of plastic. And the screws that they provided, like some 10 gauge ones, they lined up with holes that were already here but they were very big holes that allowed for like pops to go into them. So what I ended up having to do is put some of my screws through and then I'm not sure if you can be able to see but behind there I've had to, I used a speed clip as kind of a nut for the PK screw for the self tapping. So I just used like that and a speed clip as a secure nut thing. But yeah, now I'm about to put this thing on. This one here comes from the loom, plugs straight into there. And this is the factory screen plug, which is gonna plug into there. And then those ones will obviously plug into the heater and it will be all good, I hope. Oh, and I redid the steering control wire as well. So let's uh, just quickly set that, make sure it's all good. Steering remote, preset, Mazda, press volume up, yep, press volume down, completed, cool, let's get a station, hold for seek up, oh wait, did I put the aerial in? There we go, now I've got the area one, and we're all good, plugging down. Okay, let's plug this bad boy in and try and see if it's going to go. I'm going to There goes the battery on the DSLR. Still getting used to how long it's supposed to last. It lasted really well yesterday. I guess I did more time lapse than anything yesterday, but this has been me kind of trying to figure stuff out. Alright, now this. What? There. There. Yeah. Cool. Like that. Okay. Let's turn the key on. My Mazda 6. Oh yeah. So now it seems like AC as opposed to having off, uh, on and eco on. It now only has off on. The recycling air button works. Hazard light button works. The rear demister button doesn't do anything. Oh, okay, the rear demister button does work, but only. All right, no, it does work, and the LED's lighting up. Cool. Everything seems to be working. Oh, this... At least it's a tight ass fit. I don't know about this fitment, eh? That's with all of the pops pushing against their uh, parts that need that pushing against each of them, so they're only gonna go in another centimeter. That's with it in. So that's just what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, not as impressed with the fitment of, of this kit as the previous one. Actually, a wee bit average. This doesn't line up with that. Okay. Now I can put this back together. That plugs in there. This plugs in there. Oh wait, I need to put those screws at the bottom in. Okay, and now this piece goes back down. Sorry, I can't add that to your library. You don't seem to be subscribed to Apple Music. Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Pop that down there. Now fix up this uh, gear stick. Cool. That, this stupid thing goes back in here. This pops back down over top of how. Cool. 
everything's fine, just put the glove box back in. I am not going to bother putting this uh, DVD-ROM unit for the navigation system back in because that's for Japan. It's on, and then... Da-da. Cool. Volume, down, up, mode, mute, it's all working. Okay guys, there we go. The uh, Mazda is done. I know it was a bit of a strange video. It kind of took me by surprise a wee bit just because of the fact that the kit that I had to work with was not something I was familiar with. It was brand new to me and so I had to figure out how everything went together. But anyway, it all worked out in the end. It's all good. I um, reassembled the factory one back to normal so she can keep that somewhere if she ever wants to replace it back in. Let's uh, turn it on and have a look. You've pretty much already seen it, but I'll just give you another rundown. So it just says my Mazda 6 up there the whole time. I can change the time. There we go. That's the clock set back to normal. Uh, so now, if we were to turn the heater on, heater still comes up, up the top there. Has the light button. I notice every time I turn them on, there's that slow start delay. So turn it on, you listen. So it goes tick, 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 tick. Like, it's just a bit funny. It's obviously something to do with the Metro computer that's in here. The mister, that works. The LED lights up. I can't hear any relays clicking, but uh, it does go. The AC, as I said, that lights up and works. But um, now, as opposed to having off, eco, or on, it's only got off and on and the internal air button does work as well. Lights up. Actually, I wonder if these are illuminated. Let me turn the lights on. Oops. Are these illuminated? They are. You guys might not be able to tell, but with the lights on, these little buttons do have a backlight. That's cool. And obviously that stuff is all the same. This thing still opens and closes. And now, nothing comes up. Because I have it unplugged. There we go. As far as this kit goes, I have to say, I don't know if I like it better. I think I definitely prefer the original Metro kit, which was only a singleton, because it used the factory heater buttons, which were much nicer quality, and the factory hazard light button, which was also much nicer quality. Obviously, that was only a singleton, but I mean, so it's limiting in that way. But for a singleton stereo, I definitely would have preferred that one because the fitment is way better as well. This kit might look like it's sitting out, but that's actually it all the way in. And you can see that there's a gap just there so that I can get my screwdriver all the way into. So it looks like this line here should really meet up with the line of the car, but it just doesn't. It looks good at the bottom. The roundover meets all good. And that kind of, that line there is good. But up here at the top, it's kind of okay there and then it just gets bad towards the outside. So it looks like this whole kit should have been like sunk in a bit deeper, but that's just how it sits. So as far as the shape goes, I give the kit like a, uh, a six out of 10. Functionality, a seven out of 10, just cause I'm not super happy with the quality of the buttons. Like yes, they are nice and rubberized, but um, they have that funny thing where, you know, the rubber buttons, like they're kind of flonky and all over the place that like you can, really wriggle them around. In fact, I don't think these are mechanical tack switches. I think these are those type that when you push them down, it shuts off all the light from getting in there. So it's like a light uh, sensing button style that actually is what you would, it's what you would find in one of these remotes. It's um, yeah, it's like a light button thing like you'd get in a remote, which is strange, but it's okay. It works. Steering wheel controls. They all work, of course, because the Pioneer takes care of that, so that's good. So yeah, there we go guys, that was a slightly more interesting video than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a straightforward how-to video where I show you how I install the, um, the simple metric kit with the singleton slot. Turned out to be a lot more complicated, I had to learn it on the spot. But overall we got it in and it's looking good and it's, it's working fine. So thank you for watching this video guys, choose to be happy and I'll catch you next time. Kakitano.